Okay. Yeah. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mahima Sirajh Kumar Rawal, and I'm a PhD scholar at Genetics and Developmental Biology Laboratory, Institute of Advanced Research, Gandhinagar, Gujarat. I'm working under the supervision of Professor Anand K. Tiwari, sir. So the title of my presentation is Drosophila melanogaster as a model organism for study of neurodegenerative diseases. So as we are concerned with neurodegenerative diseases in this talk, I'm going to give a brief introduction about what are neurodegenerative diseases. So these neurodegenerative diseases is a hyperneme that is used to address a number of diseases that primarily affects the neuron of central nervous system, peripheral nervous system and spinal cord. Uh, these diseases are reported to be multifactorial diseases. That means that uh, the uh, onset or the occurrence of these diseases is an outcome of multiple factors contributing simultaneously or maybe individually. That might include age, genetics, lifestyle, etc. So as I have mentioned that age is one of the primitive cause. So, uh, and it is because uh, we know that by increasing age, a number of biological processes tend, uh, tend to malfunction or get weakened, where reduction in the antioxidant defense system is reported to be the most important. So why this is reported to be the very most important uh, causative factor is because a number of uh, NDDs have shown that oxidative stress is one of the possible cause of the onset uh, for the onset of Alzheimer's disease or any other kind of NDD. So the type of uh, NDDs include Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and spirocerebellar ataxia. So the common symptoms of NDDs include memory loss, motor dysfunction, and sensory dysfunction, apathy, forgetfulness, agitation, anxiety, and mood changes, etc. So this is the figure that shows the positive, possible causative factors of NDDs. So that includes genetics, aging, microbiota dysbiosis, diet, calcium resistance, protein misfolding, altered protein modification, mitochondrial dysfunction, exposure to harmful metals, and importantly, the reactive oxygen species generation that ultimately leads to the oxidative stress condition in various entities. So this is the figure that depicts the uh, uh, five different types of entities and its culprit proteins. So in the case of Parkinson's disease, it is the mutant alpha synuclein that is uh, the responsible causative factor for it. Uh, then in, in the case of Huntington's disease, it is polyglutamine. In the case of ALS, it is superoxide dismutase 1. In the case of spinocerebral ataxia, it is ataxin. So uh, ataxins, are based on the type of the SCA, the ataxins are uh, changed as per. Well. Um, and in the case of Alzheimer's disease, it's the amyloid beta, uh, beta peptide formation that ultimately leads to the aggregation into senile plaques. So this is the figure that depicts the uh, various entities and the affected regions and in that particular uh, neurodegenerative disease. So in the case of FTD, Alzheimer's disease and HD, the cerebral cortex, which has an executive function, is reported to be affected. In the case of uh, Parkinson's disease, HD, AD, and FTD, basal ganglia that has a role in movement and reward is reported to be affected. In the case of Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Huntington's disease, thalamus, which has a sensory gateway, is responsible to be affected. Uh, memory that has uh, that is that is the role of hippocampus is reported to be affected in the case of Alzheimer's disease and cerebellum uh, that is affected in the case of SCA and it particularly has a role in balance and movement. Uh, so uh, as we can see that in the case of um, uh, this uh, 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 ALS and SCA brainstem and spinal cord lamina 9 which has a role in basic body function and that uh, controls the muscle movement and reflex is reported to be affected in the case of ALS and SCA. So this was all about the uh, basics about the um, uh, different types of entities. So here I have prepared a figure that shows five different types of entities. It, uh, it's culprit genes that are involved in the onset of uh, the disease, the proteins and how does it affect the electron transport chain. Now why I'm concerned with the electron transport chain is that because it is one of the causative factor of mitochondrial dysfunction and also the oxidative stress. So I'll explain how does, uh, how does that happen. So in the case of Alzheimer's disease, the mutated presenolin 1 and 2 is reported to be uh, responsible for production of amyloid beta peptides. So that is again responsible for the inhibition of complex 4. In the case of ALS, it is the superoxide dismutase 1 and that is responsible for um, inhibiting the complexes 1, 2, 3 and 4. In the case of Parkinson's disease, it is the alpha synuclein and this mutated alpha synuclein is responsible for inhibiting the exchange of complex 1 and complex 4. In the case of Huntington's disease, it is polyglutamine and the mutant Huntington is responsible for inhibiting the action of complex 2 and complex 4 again. Uh, in the case of SCA, here I have taken the example of SCA2 only. So in that case, mutant ataxin 2 is, res is responsible for inhibiting the complex 1 and complex 2. Now, why this electron transport chain dysfunction leads to the mitochondrial dysfunction? So we can say that based on this, 
if the complexes are being uh, uh, inhibited so the electron transport chain will, will show, for sure be inhibited and that might lead to the leakage of electrons from the uh, complexes and that again is not eliminated by the endogenous antioxidant defense system because as i mentioned that uh, oxidative stress and the weakened antioxidant defense system is the um, one of the prime, uh, primitive uh, markers that are reported in various NDDs. So therefore, we can say that electron dysfunction or maybe mitochondrial dysfunction might be a cause and consequence of both and vice versa that might happen. So in the case of, again, mitochondrial dysfunction, that might also lead to oxidative stress. Just because, as I mentioned, that electron leak is one of the factor and the inability of antioxidant defense system to eliminate is the uh, cause of it. So that is, again, another uh, primitive marker for uh, various NDDs. And that ultimately leads to the uh, uh, neuronal death. So here I have mentioned the misfolded protein aggregation. That is, again, that again goes with all type of diseases. And it has somewhere uh, a role in the uh, blockage of various uh, neuronal tracts or maybe we could say uh, blockage of synapse formation. So next, uh, my lab is concerned with answering few questions about Alzheimer's disease. So I'll give a brief introduction about that. So Alzheimer's disease is one of the most common form of dementia that is uh, spread worldwide and affects many population. Uh, it has been reported that approximately 80% of the elderly people who are above the age of 65 are at higher risk of developing it. Uh, the prevalence is very much higher because till now around 50 million people across the globe has been reported to be affected by Alzheimer's disease and 4.5 million is contributed by India. So that is a very big number and it's, it is going to increase um, till 2050. So uh, like other entities, and, uh, Alzheimer's disease is also has a uh, multifactorial etiology. That means multiple factors are responsible for uh, the occurrence of it. So that includes again the genetics, lifestyle, aging and environmental factors. Uh, so Alzheimer's disease occur in two forms that includes the early onset Alzheimer's disease and late onset Alzheimer's disease. We will focus this in the next slide. Uh, so the common symptoms of Alzheimer's disease include forgetfulness, behavioral changes, uh, motor and sensory dysfunction. Patients with severe Alzheimer's disease need help in personal care and they might also feed, uh, feel difficulty in communicating. So till now there is no treatment for Alzheimer's disease. We cannot say that there are few drugs for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease that have been tested at clinical uh, rounds, but they have failed at some or other point, uh, which might also be due to the lack of uh, molecular details about the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. So therefore, um, identifying the positive gene alterations or maybe their interaction between, uh, I mean, between each, uh, I mean, each other and the signaling pathways. And also for looking supplemental treatments that might cite a light to understand the disease pathogenesis better and maybe help us to prolong the uh, course of disease uh, is very much helpful and very much required to be answered. Uh, so as I mentioned that Alzheimer's disease occurs in two forms, that is the early onset Alzheimer's disease and late onset Alzheimer's disease. So early onset Alzheimer's disease, is, it contributes around 5 to 10 percent of the total population, uh, AD population. And as I mentioned that it is early onset, that means it is diagnosed, diagnosed early in the age, that is between the 35 years and 60 years. Uh, 50 percent of early onset Alzheimer's disease are reported to be familial. That means few mutations in the gene, let's say amyloid precursor protein, presenilin and tau are the uh, causative factors. So I will discuss this in the further slides. Then uh, talking about the late onset Alzheimer's disease, which is also known as sporadic AD. So around 95% of the total AD population is being co contributed by the late onset Alzheimer's disease. And it is, as it is mentioned that it is late onset, so it is diagnosed after the age of 60. So some possible causative factors of Alzheimer's disease, this late onset Alzheimer's disease include diet, activity, environmental factors, and the genetic risk factors includes the uh, mutations in apolipo epsilon 4 and amyloid precursor protein ectodomin. Uh, so skipping to the pathological hallmarks of AD that includes the extracellular aggregation of amyloid beta peptide and intracellular accumulation of neurofibrillary tangles. Uh, so on the right of my slide, I have uh, made a figure that shows the healthy brain. So here we can see that the shape of the brain and the um, structure is very fine. However, it is shrunken in the case of Alzheimer's disease. So this shows the neuronal loss uh, in, the, uh, in, in the case of Alzheimer's disease. So as I mentioned that one of the pathological hallmark is the senile plaque formation that is of amyloid beta peptides. And this amyloid precursor protein is one of the precursor to that uh, peptide formation. So I'll give a brief introduction about what is APP. So amyloid precursor protein, it's a, tan, it is, it's a type 1 transmembrane protein which is expressed in many types of cells, but it is particularly concentrated at the synapses in the neurons. And uh, it is a 695 amino acid long protein which has a large ectodomain and relatively short intracellular region. Um, amyloid precursor protein is particularly um, 
uh, cleaved into smaller fragments by two catabolic pathways is that includes the non amylogenic pathway and the amylogenic pathway so what happens in the normal condition or the non amylogenic pathway is that amyloid precursor protein is cleaved into smaller fragments and that might act as cell, uh, cell surface receptor and it, ha it has also been uh, implicated that it has role in uh, synapse formation neural plasticity and it has it performs antimicrobial activity too however in the case of abnormal cleavage or maybe the amylogenic pathway the app is cleaved abnormally which is responsible for the um, generation of insoluble amyloid beta peptides and it is again thought to be actually not thought to be but have to be uh, it has been proven that uh, these insoluble amyloid beta peptide is responsible for the onset and progression of ad so this is one of the pathological hallmarks uh, that is the aggregation of senile plaques uh, in the case of alzheimer's disease first i'll explain the uh, non amylogenic pathway that is the cleavage of am amyloid precursor protein under physiological condition so this amyloid precursor protein is first cleaved by gamma secretase into sapp alpha that is soluble app alpha and a c terminal fragment of 83 amino acids this c terminal fragment of 83 amino acid is further cleaved by gamma secretase and due to the production of app intracellular domain and the p3 fragment so as i mentioned that in normal condition it has a role in synapse formation blood brain barrier protection and it performs an antimicrobial activity however in the case of amylogenic pathway that is followed in the alzheimer's disease uh, the app is first cleaved by beta secretase that gives us sapp beta and it is further cleaved um, by, that is the, it, it also gives a c terminal fragment of 99 amino acid that is further cleaved by gamma secretase and it is uh, actually here is the case where the app is cleaved abnormally by the gamma secretase maybe due to the mutations in its uh, subunit that includes presenilin and nicastrin and it gives us a uh, app intracellular domain and insoluble amyloid beta peptides of 40 to 42 amino acid longs so uh, this is again further responsible uh, this is actually um, uh, released extracellularly and therefore it is one of the extracellular pathological hallmark of ad so it uh, uh, gets accumulated between two neurons and further blocks uh, many processes so what uh, what amyloid beta peptide also does is that it induces the reactive oxygen species generation and ultimately oxidative stress so as i mentioned that ros in the case of age related neurodegenerative disorders are not eliminated properly so that might also lead to mitochondrial dysfunction which is again a very prime positive factor for many entities so this is the other, another pathological hallmark that is the formation of uh, intracellular neurofibrillary uh, tau tangles so in the normal condition what happens is that this tau that is microtubule associated protein tau is responsible for maintaining the uh, intact uh, uh, intact structure or maybe the um, uh, or maybe it stabilizes the uh, microtubule that provides the path for many cargoes to reach the um, exon terminals or the cell body um, uh, in in the normal conditions so what happens in under under normal condition is that th these are phosphorylated and dephosphorylated alternatively and that's how the uh, they are stabilized and stabilizes the microtubule tract but what happens in the case of alzheimer's disease is that uh, that one uh, one another i mean reason for this uh, hyperphosphorylation of tau is again reported or maybe hypothesized that uh, amyloid beta peptide aggregation is one of the cause of hyperphosphorylation of tau so what happens in this case is that the phosphatases and dephosphatases uh, the the the, the fig, their uh, role is altered and the hyperphosphorylation that means the kinases work more than the the uh, then the phosphatases and therefore the hyperphosphorylation takes place and due to that the stability of tau protein diminishes and uh, lead, leads to the destruction of the microtubule tract and that is again responsible for mitochondrial dysfunction as i mentioned in the senile plaque also uh, this nfts are also responsible for mitochondrial dysfunction so how it is uh, responsible for mitochondrial dysfunction is that it actually blocks the pathway of uh, the mitochondria to reach the exon terminals which has a role to uh, deliver um, atp at the exon terminals and aids in the synapse formation so we can clearly uh, imagine that if it is blocking the way of mitochondria mitochondria won't be able to reach there and due to the aggregation here that might lead to uh, mitochondrial dysfunction so ultimately this hyperphosphorylated tau leads to um, declination in the mitochondrial bioenergetic just because it, it cannot reach the exon terminals it also blockages the uh, blocks the exonal transport because as i mentioned that it is intracellularly aggregated and ultimately reduces the synaptic function and neuronal dysfunction takes place so here we are concerned with uh, i mean this all this, this conference is actually concerned with um, answering uh, the role of multiple uh, model organism for different studies so here i'm going to focus on drosophila melanogaster as a model organism for neurodegenerative diseases so this is the timeline of drosophila melanogaster as a model organism starting from 1901 till date we are using this model so it's a very uh, long period 
so uh, the contribution of drosophila melanogaster in biological research starting with the discovery of pattern formation genes that was awarded a nobel prize uh, to edward b lewis christian and eric for their uh, discovery for this particular discovery of uh, pattern formation genes next was the discovery of homeotic genes where four clusters are there in the case of humans which is again in po possible in the case of uh, drosophila that includes hox a b c and d these all are on the chromosome number 16 15 11 and 2 uh, then next is the contribution of drosophila melanogaster again in biological sciences so it was the identification of the very first mutant that was the white uh, white gene and it is uh, one of the discovery related to x linked inheritance then um, identification of x specification genes that is x determining genes so that were the um, required in the case of anterior region uh, nanos oscar vasa in the case of posterior gerken in the case of dorsal and dorsal in the case of ventral next is the very most uh, the, the most important discovery that is the first genetic map development that was done by um, a student of th morgan that is who is uh, alfred henry stewart went who created genetic map for five genes that include five traits uh, including the uh, yellow body color white gene vermilion i miniature wing and rudimentary wing so these were all the uh, background uh, discoveries uh, that were related to drosophila melanogaster and that is that is very important model organism that can be used and which is an invertebrate model importantly uh, so what all can we do with the flies includes the enzymatic assays we can perform all the enzymatic assays that including uh, uh, superoxidase mutase assay catalase enzymatic assay and gst so all this can be used to um, um, estimate the en endogenous antioxidant uh, uh, enzymes in particular studies we can also do neuronal studies so the figure a shows the uh, connection between the eye imaginal disc and the brain of larva here we can see the exonal projection so all these studies can be done that the connection connective studies can be done in the case of neuronal diseases we can also um, uh, check for the cell death uh, in the case of uh, um, larval brain or maybe the adult flies not maybe for sure in the adult fly adult fly brain also we can use it for survivorship assay so as i mentioned that ndd is all law is all about longevity so this can also be done we can perform behavioral assay so as i mentioned that alzheimer's disease has motor and sensory dysfunction for that matter if you want to check a particular uh, i mean the role of particular uh, gene or maybe a supplement that uh, that has a neuroprotective potential we can check the uh, check for the behavioral assays also so for the sensory dysfunction we can go for the photodiagnostic assay and for the locomotor uh, for the motor dysfunction we can go for the locomotor assay i'll discuss this for the in the further slides so why drosophila melanogaster as a model to study uh, various entities so that includes the 75% disease gene homology with humans the next is fly brain has a complex cns that is made up of other, approximately 2 lakh neurons further the neurons are very similar of uh, i mean to with human in, in the shape and synaptic intercommunication Uh, the most important thing is that this can be used to find uh, or discover the novel genes that are in uh, that are involved in the expression of very uh, i mean different disease genotypes the most important thing again comes here is that males and females are easily distinguishable with an added advantage that we can isolate the virgin females for facilitating genetic cross that is to uh, produce the transgenic fly lines um now why drosophila melanogaster is a good model for alzheimer's disease is that it has a homologous gene that is amyloid precursor protein like in drosophila which is uh, the amyloid precursor protein in the case of humans as i mentioned in the uh, senile plaque formation pathological hallmark so the most important thing again that is the genetic tool that we can use for uh, generating transgenic lines that is tissue specific uh, uh, gene expression using uh, us galfor binary system so this us galfor so us stands for the upstream activating system downstream to which we have the uh, gene of our interest and this driver line takes the galfor which is again the tissue specific galfor we can use uh, so as i mentioned that we are concerned with the uh, alzheimer's disease study right so we can uh, use the driver line uh, that is uh, tissue specific um, that is tissue specific and use the us line which is again uh, specific to our gene of interest so here we can express the amyloid beta tau and apl in the genes and we can uh, get the ad related phenotypes so what all we can do with these flies that is the transgenic ad model flies we can uh, always um, check the 
uh, eye phenotype of the flies, we can always go for the locomotor and phototaxis behavior. The molecular details that can be uh, determined uh, improves the gene expression level. So let's say if I fed the flies with a supplement that has a neuroprotective potential or a gene I'm checking. So I can always check for the gene expression level of all these AD related, AD related gene and confirm whether my supplement or my gene has a neuroprotective potential or not. And we, uh, and we can also go for the cell death studies because the uh, because let's say if they're expressing the AD related, AD related gene, then we can for sure see the cell death in the brain of the fly. So that can also be done and we can also uh, skip down to the ATP quantification. As I mentioned that mitochondrial dysfunction is one of the plausible causative factor. Then uh, uh, skipping to the fly stocks that can be used. So the control and driver lines include Oregon R plus and W1118. So these are the uh, wild type flies we can use. And GMR Galfor and LF Galfor are the driver lines that can be used. So GMR Galfor stands for glass multiple reporter, which are particularly expressed in the eyes of the fly. So if we want to see the expression in the eyes of the fly, we use this fly line. Uh, and LF Galfor that stands for embryonic lethal abnormal visual system. It's particularly expressed in the brain of the fly. So, uh, as I mentioned in GMR Galpa, we can check the uh, expression of the particular uh, gene of interest in the brain of the fly also. Now, what are the AD model flies uh, that includes uh, US tau wild type, US beta 42 human over curlio, US beta 42 K52 uh, semicolon, US beta 42 K53. So, this semicolon uh, defines the number of chromosomes. So, this is on the second chromosome and this is on the third chromosome, that is the integration can be done. So here the K52 represents the mutation at K52 residue, lysine 52 residue, and this is the lysine 53 residue. And we can also use US Arctic A beta 42 fly line, which is an, another AD model fly. So this is the paper that one of my seniors with my guide has published. So uh, this shows all the experiments that could be done using uh, fly, fly as a model for Alzheimer's disease pathologies. So first is the gustatory assay or the feeding assay that we can do, which is uh, almost around uh, which is very useful when we are checking uh, the neuroprotective, neuroprotective potential of supplements. So here this shows, it confirms. What we do in this case is that we uh, uh, mix the food, uh, food color with our food and that shows the redness, uh, the grade of grading of redness and that confirms whether the, uh, the, the supplement is working or it is a differential eating. The next is the phenotypic plasticity that can be checked. That is the eye phenotype. So the Drosophila eye is made up of omitidia, that is 7 to 800 omitidia, which is responsible for the vision. And it gives the mosaic vision particularly. And but for sure, it has a compound eye. So this can also be done. So if we are expressing the gene of our interest in the eyes of fly, let's say the AD model. So uh, we can here clearly see that on the left, which is A, we have a very clear uh, and a linear omitidial arrangement, which is the wild type fly. So once we have expressed the gene of our interest, that is the AD gene, we can see the fused omitidial arrangement. So this shows the neurodegeneration in that case because the omitidials have been lost and that is the reason why the uh, adjacent, adjacent uh, omitidials have uh, merged. Next, we can do the behavioral assays, as I mentioned, that could be done in larva or adult also. And in the case of sensory dysfunction, for sensory dysfunction, we can check always the phototaxis assay. We can also perform developmental assays that includes developmental toxicity and survivorship assay. Biochemical assays that could be uh, performed include shortcut GST, GPX, and melon and yet estimation. Detection of stress markers includes the HSP70 and JNK expression can also be checked. Uh, as I mentioned, that cell death assay is very important because uh, it is a neurodegenerative diseases. So for sure, we'll get the uh, apoptotic cells in the particular gene of, I mean, in the particular tissue uh, where we have expressed our gene. So here, the green dots, that is the A positive cell, cell shows the dead cell in the uh, eye imaginal disc of the fly. We can also perform cyto uh, immunocytochemistry studies for the same. So skipping to the next is the human and the comparison between the human brain uh, normal and AD and the Drosophila brain normal and AD. So here we can see that there is no vascular degeneration which is possible in the case, which is not possible, which is actually there in the case of humans. Uh, so here is the vascular degeneration which is which is uh, which is again mimicked in the case of Drosophila melanogaster when, when we have expressed the AD related gene. So here in the A dash we can see there is no vascular degeneration, but in the case of this B dash. We, show, we can see the uh, red uh, circles that uh, represents the vascular degeneration. It is again in the case of E dash. So uh, skipping to this, uh, this is how we do the climbing essay. We uh, we add 20 flies each, and we uh, in the IMS tube and we check for the uh, eight centimeter mark for 10 seconds. And in the case of photodactyl essay, what we do is we take one dark path and one light path. Why why dark path? Because these flies are very confused. So the sensory dysfunction has taken place. So for that matter, we have to use this. 
uh, now skipping to the areas of our interest uh, it includes uh, neurodegenerative uh, the, the, the neurodegenerative disease of our interest is alzheimer's disease the genes which we are uh, involved uh, i mean we're interested is in mero and sirtuin 1 Uh, the potential medicinal plants and compounds we have tested till now includes arthrosera pratensis that is pyrulina vitamin e vitamin d and coenzyme q10 uh, the current uh, the current study that has uh, that that is uh, going on includes the role of gut microbiota in the onset and progression of alzheimer's disease so this is my topic of interest so as i mentioned that i am uh, checking the uh, role of gut microbiota on the progression of alzheimer's disease using drosophila melanogaster as a model uh, model organism for ad first of all i'll give the comparative uh, knowledge about the gut of the drosophila melanogaster and human so in the case of human the esophagus is the proventriculus in the ca- uh, in the case of drosophila melanogaster the role of stomach is been played by the crop the role of kidney is been played by the malpighian tubules the role of some small intestine is done by the uh, mid gut the role of large intestine is um, played by hindgut and the rectum and anus is same so this was all about the structure the similar structure of human and drosophila gut now skipping to the type a uh, type of cells that are produced includes enterocytes enteroendocrine cells enteroblasts and the intestinal stem cells so all these are also similar in the case of human and drosophila so these intestinal stem cells are responsible for the generation of enteroblasts which further is uh, divided into enterocytes and enteroendocrine cells so these enterocytes are the absorptive cells whereas the enteroendocrine cells are the a uh, secretory cells that um, uh, that secretes various uh, various type of hormones so now why i am linking the gut and the brain uh, so that 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 is a very uh, huge question just because uh, we have a microbiota gut brain axis which is a bidirectional axis so there are few pathways that are followed by the gut microbiota itself that that are the bacteria or their peptides to reach brain and they modulate uh, various brain functions so that includes the peripheral immune system vagus nerve gut circulation so these all uh, are explored in the case of alzheimer's disease till now so uh, this is a normal uh, normal condition where there is no uh, pathogenic involvement but however in the case of alzheimer's disease what happens is that the uh, altered gut microbiota that is the increase in the pathogenic uh, bacteria and uh, uh, reduce, uh, reducing uh, reducing uh, abundance of the uh, good microbiota we can say the good flora is a resultant of the uh, disease so uh, there is a, there is one uh, metabolite that is called the short chain fatty acid which has a role in uh, maintaining the intestinal uh, the uh, small intestinal uh, membrane integrity and also it has a role in uh, maintaining the integrity of blood brain barrier so let's say if we can say that the um, scfa producing bacteria are getting lower there are higher chances that the small intestinal epithelium might get uh, spaces in between that leads to the uh, that uh, that opens the pathway for multiple uh, metabolites that includes the um, uh, let's say uh, the neurotransmitters and neurotransmitters is fine actually but the uh, the blockage i mean the pore opening of the pore might lead to the uh, um, allow, might lead to the allowance of the lipopolysaccharides or the bacterial amyloids and uh, uh, other um, metabolites that includes trimethyl n oxide so these all these three reaches the brain via the peripheral nervous uh, peripheral immune system where it activates the peripheral immune cells including monocyte dendritic cell natural killer cell macrophages and t cell while reaching by reaching to, to the brain it activates the my, uh, brain resident immune cells that includes the micro uh, microglial and perivascular macrophages that is again responsible for uh, generating uh, pro inflammatory cytokines that include tnf alpha iron interferon gamma and il12 which is again very important for the uh, neuroinflammation to take place which is again a positive possible causative factor of alzheimer's disease um, now uh, only by this pore uh, the uh, the the traveling of uh, bacterial amyloids and the neurotransmitters with lps via vagus nerve is also responsible for modulating brain functions um the third one is the blood circulation so through blood circulation bacteria itself and the bacterial amyloids and gut peptides and neurotransmitters are reported to reach brain and modulate the a uh, brain functions that include um, it might lead to the amyloid beta plaque formation it uh, leads to the neuroinflammation condition insulin resistance and microglial activation which is all related to alzheimer's disease progression so that is why we can say that um, microbiota gut brain axis plays a very critical role in the onset of alzheimer's disease in in any person who is living their life so gut dysbiosis and that is why it is said that we must always take care about what we eat so uh, gut dysbiosis and its role which are been um, explored till now in the case of alzheimer's disease include the impaired uh, scfa production that increases the blood brain barrier uh, permeability and allows the peripheral bile acids and cholesterol to reach brain 
so while this cholesterol is very important because this cholesterol is reported to internalize the amyloid precursor protein and that is again uh, reported to um, cleave the amyloid precursor i mean lead to the cleavage of amyloid precursor protein in an abnormal way that again the impairment in the scfa production is also reported for the aggregation of amyloid beta peptides as these scfas are also reported to inhibit the protein protein interaction uh, for your skipping to this yes a uh, trimethyl amine n oxide production uh, so it causes the cognitive deterioration by increasing the beta secretase activity i mentioned that beta secretase is only uh, responsible for the amylogenic pathway that is uh, that cleaves the uh, amyloid precursor protein into ctf99 then again the uh, lps reaching brain leads to the formation of antimicrobial peptides uh, and pro inflammatory cytokines ultimately leading to neuroinflammation so that is why i am um, very much focused on uh, studying the organism or identifying the organisms that are uh, responsible for the disease onset till now the information is still the genus level but no species level information uh, is been provided so that that is my goal to uh, see now this is one uh, i mean the work of one of my seniors that is dr komal panchal and she is a post doctoral fellow at university of massachusetts so uh, she worked on the study of role of miro which is a mitochondrial outer membrane protein in drosophila melanogaster model of alzheimer's disease so miro is particularly a mitochondrial rho gtvas and it is an evolutionarily conserved mitochondrial outer membrane protein so it plays a very important role in mitochondrial axonal transport and is responsible for maintenance of mitochondrial dynamics so how it is responsible for mitochondrial axonal transport basically what it does is that uh, it makes a major protein complex with melton which is an adapter protein and with kinesin uh, which when in the case of retrograde transport and with dynamin when in the case of retrograde transport and there was one study that reported miro mutation is responsible for uh, amyloid beta induced behavioral deficits so maybe my senior was the second student uh, or maybe the second researcher uh, to show the uh, role of miro in the case of alzheimer's disease so as i mentioned that drosophila melanogaster is a very good model organism for studying ndds because it can mimic the ad related pathologies so as i mentioned if we express the uh, um, gene of our interest in the eyes we will see the degeneration in the eyes so these two are the um, normal flies that is the wild type this is the wild type plan this is the experimental control so we can see the omitular arrangement is very fine in this case this is the same image of the same so here we can see along with the uh, omitular arrangement the brittle arrangement is very fine but in the case of alzheimer disease so these three or uh, these three uh, genotypes we can see the degenerated part and here we can see the uh, merging of the omitidias and degeneration in this area and also the um, see we, we cannot see any of the bristles here so that is again dearranged bristle uh, uh, formation that is again in the case of both the ad model flies so that is why again we can say that this is a very good model organism for ad pathology again as i mentioned that um, i mean the the deficits that include uh, um, the sensory and the motor dysfunction so for sensory dysfunction we can always check for the light preference index that is the phototaxis assay can be done so first two are the normal flies so here we can see that the light preference index is very high which is very low in the case of ad model flies again showing that sensory dysfunction can also be mimicked then the climbing assay which is the locomotor assay we can do we can always do for the uh, for particular time length that goes for 10 20 and 30 days here the first one is the normal um, the elav galpo that is the um, experimental control we have here, used here so here we can see by the increasing time the locomotor uh, the locomotor activity is reduced which is again in the case of alzheimer's disease so again we can say that motor dysfunction can also be moved in this case for the survivor as i mentioned that uh, Uh, ad is a longevity based i mean age related neurodegenerative disease so we can always check for the longevity which is again uh, show, showing the same uh, reporting the age related uh, pathology that is reduction in the uh, survival of the flies in the case of alzheimer's disease when compared to the normal um, the wild type fly this is again with the case of body weight uh, so body weight is uh, reported to be reduced in the case of alzheimer's disease so here again we when when comparing it with the normal fly we can see the reduction in the body weight so again we can say that this model can always mimic the condition we want to uh, want it i mean want to to make it happen we can say so this is the uh, figure that shows the i imaginal uh, i imaginal disc of drosophila larva so the first is the uh, experimental control where, where we can see the air positive cells of so these are very little in the size or maybe it is not visible but when we are saying the in the case of ad we can clearly see the green dots so those are the air positive cells that are the dead cells so 
uh, here uh, that is again the case of uh, in the case of ad model slide so this is the us miro that is uh, that she wanted to show whether us miro has a role in that or not so she could uh, prove that uh, in the case of uh, miro over expression the number of a positive cells reduced when compared to the control ad fly so this is the uh, histogram for the same here we can see that the a positive cells are very low in the case of experiment uh, the wild type control it was increased in the case of the experimental control which was again re reduced in the case of uh, this uh, uh, miro rna then when again it was used for the ad model fly and again when uh, miro was used the over expression of miro views it was reduced so here we can say that over expression of miro is uh, responsible it, it interact genetically interacts with the ad uh, related genes so this is again the work of miro here we can see that over expression of miro let yes yes sorry it's already getting late so can you please uh, wind up the session as soon um, as yes i'll i'll, I'll complete it in five actually yes Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll complete in fine. Yeah. So that is again uh, the overexpression of Miro. So here again we can see that while after overexpressing it, we could at least see one result in a particular uh, uh, direction, which was again recovered in the case of uh, the US beta forty two fly line uh, when uh, Miro was overexpressed, which is again uh, deteriorated in the case of Miro knockdown. uh suggesting that so i'm not going to uh, explain all this ultimately i want to say is that uh, miro genetically interacts with the ad related gene that includes a beta tau and appl especially in the case of miro over expression and this was maybe the second study uh, next is the uh, one of my uh, seniors uh, work that is study of the role of sirtuin 2 d sir 2 gene in alzheimer's disease model of drosophila melanogaster so sirtuins are nad dependent class 3 histone deacetylases that is that functions to um, remove a style group uh, we all know that, that that is the function of histone deacetylases from histone by hydrolysis on the histone and non histone proteins it was first discovered in yeast that is saccharomyces cerevisiae and it is um, uh, conserved in i mean uh, ranging from the lower organisms to the higher organisms so uh, the for example the gene bear uh, i mean the organism that bears the gene includes yeast nematodes fruit flies uh, mice and human homo sapiens so here we are concerned with drosophila melanogaster only so that that's why i'll, I'll focus on this only so uh, um, the drosophila melanogaster has uh, five sir twins that include dsir2 dsir2 dsir4 dsir6 and dsir7 and these are differentially located in uh, cellular and subcellular region i'm not going into depth so uh, here i'll uh, the I'll, here i'll present the key finding of my senior so when she she checked the uh, ad model uh, ad related genes that is appl amyloid beta and tau uh, she could see rafi phenotype impaired climbing and protexis activity reduced survival excessive cellulite in neuronal tissue increased activity of apoptotic genes of course increased activity of amyloid beta peptide uh, appl and tau and increased jnk notch expression that ultimately leads to the neurodegeneration so when she over expressed the sort one she could uh, see rescue or maybe improvement in the uh, rafi phenotype and all the other experiments she had done where she could um, report reduced expression of apoptotic genes which is actually very good and this uh, determines that actually the sort one over expression is working and again the reduced expression of ad related genes and reduced jnk notch activity so ultimately leading to reduced neurodegeneration which was the which was not the case in the case of uh, sort one down regulation it deteriorated all the condition which is mentioned here so key findings uh, report is uh, sort of in one interacts with ad related genes including amyloid beta tau and appl and drosophila melanogaster model of ad where over expression of sort one improves and rescues the ad related genes so this is uh, the work of coins and q10 uh, our lab has also done so it is a, it is a unique lipid soluble antioxidant that is produced in all cells uh, per, uh, in all animal cells and that is predominantly present in the brain kidney heart and liver tissue so it has a very important role in electron transport chain and, and it regulates the uh, mitochondrial activity particularly by acting as an electron carrier so further um supplementation i'll skip to the supplementation part that how it helps in this uh, includes uh, i mentioned everything about this uh, a beta plaque formation and neurofibrillary tang tangle formation that leads to mitochondrial dysfunction and microtubule is loss and axonal transport that again leads to atp reduction and oxidative stress and ultimately neuronal dysfunction 
so coenzym q10 is reported to rescue all these things that includes it uh, especially it as isolates the uh, reactoxin species from the oxidative phosphorylation and reduces the oxidative da damage and ultimately reducing the neuronal dysfunction and mitochondrial dysfunction so this is the uh, these are the results of it uh, so first three all, are always the first is the wild type control last uh, the next one and so these sorry first and second are the wild type control the third one is experimental control and last two are the uh, ad ad model slice so we can see the uh, neuro degenerated area in this case which is the abnormal arrangement of omitidias which is rescued when coenzyme q10 uh, were i mean the flies were fed with coenzyme q10 100 micromolar and 200 micromolar then this is the climbing activity which was reduced in the case of alzheimer's disease which is this one uh, is rescued um, significantly when um, the flies were fed with 100 micromolar food which is again in the case of 200 micromolar food uh, the ad model fly which showed the climbing activity uh, around 46 uh, rescued till 50 in the case of uh, 200 micromolar food and again that goes for the phototaxis that is the sensory uh, function so on based uh, based on this i uh, we can conclude that um, coenzyme q10 might have a, a neuroprotective role in the case of alzheimer's disease so in conclusion i would like to say that uh, it can be supported that drosophila melanogaster poses as a potential model, uh, model organism to study various entities where we can leverage uh, us galfer binary system for expressing the gene of our interest and not only these studies but we can also uh, go for the gene expression studies and uh, um, we can check for the neuroprotective effect of the pot potential medicinal plants and other compounds and maybe genes uh, that are going to be uh, found some or other day um, then these are my references uh, acknowledgement i want to acknowledge uh, Kuch Post, DBT, uh, DST, Sir, uh, Banaras Hindu University, Fly Dakia, the most important because without it, it is not possible for us to work. Uh, Institute of Advanced Research, which is my base institute, and of course, Rasipala Milanagaster. Uh, these are few publications that are published by our lab. Um, so, um, thank you. Uh, I'm open for questions.